in a dark world filled with deceit. One united voice is crying out. Revealing the truth of God's word. It's time to expose the hidden truth. And unravel the lies. While we're living in Satan's little season. With Sister Crystal and Brother Phil. Welcome to Living in Satan's Little Season show. We're your hosts. Sister Crystal. Brother Phil. Topic today, order of biblical end time events. We're going to start from the end. (laughs) And we're going to go over the biblical events in Revelation chapter 19 on. And we're just going to go through one, of, and there's a number of events. We've never really done this before because we've always talked about a scripture here, a scripture there, and everything. Now, this this show, we're putting them all together. Well, this is going to be the order rundown of each event in according to scripture and how they are recollected or John accounts them as the order they are received in. So that'll maybe help clear up some questions and thoughts. I mean, we have kind of looked over a few of these just personally um, in a few other shows, but this will give you a full rundown of the order of things. Yeah, and like Revelation 19, you know, it, it kind of starts out with, you know, the big party in heaven, the marriage supper of the Lamb, and all that stuff. And then John just kind of, after that, kind of goes back and kind of starts over again. And this is where we're going to start from because he starts over again at the Armageddon events. Of Jesus' return. John gives us events, an order of biblical events that happen mm. from Armageddon on. And there are other events that aren't really mentioned here. But we're just going to go with the Revelation events as a primary source here. Right. And we're going to go into what these events are and how they go in order. Okay, and we're going to start with Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And this is Jesus' return. We have other texts that we'll kind of bring up here like 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that kind of go into Jesus' return and all that stuff with the angels and the holy angels and all that kind of stuff. But you get Revelation 19, 11 starts out this our story today with Christ's return. And what we're going to do is go over what happens from Christ's return all the way until the very end, the great white throne judgment and the coming down of New Jerusalem. And we're going to go over that. This could be a little bit of a long show. We do want to go over, because I've always do do these bits and pieces of the scriptures all over the place, especially in in Revelation chapter 20 and and chapter 21. But now we're going to go through all the way through in one show explaining what happens. We're going to start with Revelation 19 verse 11. I'm going to read the entire chapters all the way through. And we're going to talk about every event that happens in order. Okay, Okay. so go ahead and read Revelation 19, verse 11. Let's start there. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no one knew except himself. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies in heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. And he himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he said, and he has on his robe, And on his thigh, a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Okay, we're going to stop there for a minute because here is Jesus Christ with the holy angels, Mm. just as it's described Mm -hmm. in 1 Thessalonians, the same way. And also, you know, Zechariah 14 describes this event as well. But of course, we get detail here. He's coming with the holy angels, 
was, of course, to judge the nations. Mm -hmm. That's what it kind of said there, right? And so that's why we get all this. Of course, there's other corroborating uh, texts, like Psalm 110 also corroborates this story of him coming down, of course, and squashing the nations. And so this is what he's doing here. It gives, this gives detail of he's coming in power. He's, he's not coming by himself. He's coming with all these angels. Coming. He's got a holy entourage. Yeah, yeah. He's got all these angels. See, the angels were there uh, helping him fight this war and this right. battle. And of course, we know it's the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and who that is. That's Jesus Christ, right? You know, I find it interesting that they're clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Because, you know, these guys aren't going to get dirty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a war is a dirty thing, but, you know, they didn't need to wear camo, did they? I mean, that's kind of interesting, you know? No camo involved. No need for that. Any of that nonsense. Not with these angels in charge. No, no, they, they, they know how to take out this army. So, you know, again, this, this is really describing Christ coming for war, his return, starting the Armageddon event. So when he came down, <laughs> this is really, honestly, he was ready for war, mm -hmm. his coming. Of course... We know what happens in First Thessalonians, of course. And there's the, the, what people call the rapture right. uh, of the, you know, it's the first resurrected show up, and that's the holy saints coming. We're not there yet, though. But the first one, of course, this is Christ's return. That's the first event that happens. Of course, it's corroborated in Zechariah 14. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, "Come and gather together for the supper of the great." God. The second event that happens, the birds are commanded to come to a big feast. <laughs> okay, so obviously when Christ came down, he was like, okay, I, I need to get some help here to take care of all these dead bodies that are about ready to get start showing up. So the second thing that happens is God's preparing for a victory immediately before the war even starts. That's pretty confident to call the cleanup crew before it even begins. Yeah, uh, I, I need, need these vultures, I need these <laughs> these birds to show up here because we're going to have quite a few dead bodies that I, I, I and we, we don't have we don't have the manpower to to, to clean Be all hungry, these things up. Come and eat. So this is the second thing that happens here. The birds are commanded to eat all this stuff, of course, and then of course verse eighteen, and you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses, and those who sit on them. So, of course, all these horses and people, you know, because of this battle that's going to happen. Mm. That's why, how you know, this battle's already in the past. See, the Feast of Horses. See, uh -huh. if this was a future event, they wouldn't be, nobody would be riding on horses. See, this is more proof that, of course, this Armageddon event is a past event. Unfortunately, many preachers today are saying, oh, this is a future event. Well, why would there be all these horses in around? Mm -hmm. See, again, we know it's a past event. Everybody part of this group understands all that. Right. Flesh of horses and those who sit on them, the flesh of all the people, both free and slave, both small and great. So, in other words, these, these birds are going to be feasting right. on all these bo dead bodies because Christ is going to come down and kick some butt. <laughs> kick some booty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that's, that's the second event here. Birds commanded to come and start chowing down for their feast. See, before that, of course, there's the marriage supper of the lamb. And now, mm -hmm. of course, the birds are getting their chance to get a feast. Right. Okay. So let's go ahead and read the next one here. Okay. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse against his army. Of course, that's this is, of course, describing this is the Armageddon event. Right. This is the kings of the earth, all the rulers of the earth. Of course, all under Roman rule. You know, that, that the Romans, you know, of course, they commanded everyone, oh, we're going to come to defend, you know, this, this this threat now. Of course, the whole all of them came. This is the beast, which was, you know, the, the false prophet are going to be there. And, of course, the beast was the one running all these nation states. We know the beast probably is most likely the ruler of the Roman empire at the time so mm. that's who the beast was anyway the whole point is they were there getting ready to make war against christ which right. was a big mistake okay go ahead and read the next one so that's so uh, in my opinion i call that one world war one the, the true <laughs> world war one because this was armageddon where the whole war the whole world is going to war against christ and the saints Holy and of war, course sure. yeah and then they lose really bad so of course that's never called world war one except for you know yeah, well, I call it that, but that, cause that's really the really the first real world war that, right, right. that, that happened in history. Right. Okay, go ahead, next one. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worship his image. 
these two were cast alive into the lake of the fire, burning with brimstone. Okay, so here we learn a couple things. That the beast and the false prophet become POWs in this war. Well, you know... Have you noticed that? The false prophet it said that he works signs in his presence. Right. Well, and that would make sense if he wasn't, you know, he's a false prophet. He's not the real prophet. So he's going to try to do these little... Right, right. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah. show that he somewhat looks like he's legit. But he's deceiving those who got the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. So so what? The, there's two things that happen here. The beast and the false prophet are captured, one. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing is both of them together are thrown into alive, the lake of fire. Alive. Alive into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is the first time you hear the lake of fire showing up. Right. Which I believe this is on New Earth. The okay. fire is on New Earth? Because that's where, you know, everyone goes when they die. And then we, you learn later on, this is, and so this is what I, it was kind of, another thing that was kind of catching me. Where is this lake of fire? I believe it's on New Earth. Now, New Earth existed then, but it wasn't really used for anything except there were the beasts and the false prophet that were showing up there. It'll get totally inhabited when at the Great White Throne Judgment, mm -hmm. where death and Hades are thrown into the lake of fire now, which is the second death. Mm -hmm. Right now, this is, it, this is the only place they are. And, of course, they're out of the picture. Of course, Satan is get, gets thrown there later on. We'll learn mm -hmm. all about that here in right. our timeline. But this, I believe this is on uh, on New Earth. Not in the realm of where we're at right now. Okay, so, so but they get a new home that's burning with brimstone. Well, you know what? It's not like you say. We did already a show on this. It's not a consuming fire. No, no, it's a home because right. they don't get the the more I study this, the more I think about this. I think it's more of like a name of like a place, mm. sort of like you know if you go to like Lake, you know. <laughs> lake fire or you know hey we're gonna go camping or we're gonna go to lake whatever chuck or whatever you whatever you want to name a lake it's sort of like this it's sort of like a location of a place mm -hmm. that is not in new jerusalem but it's outside that that's kind of the name that god gave everybody that's on the outside mm -hmm. okay is this lake of fire okay this is uh, this is just the impression i get because we know it's not a consuming fire because they're living there for, you know, ages with, with, you know, but of course they're tormented there. They don't like to be right. there, but they're obviously not in pain or suffering. Well, I they wouldn't just... call it, it, it is, it's a joke to say it's their new home. It is totally like a prison. It's, it's a, basically they're, they can't get out. Well, so they're... they're tormented day and night, it says mm -hmm. later on. But the point is, is this is their new place. It's kind of a, like a location of a place, but we don't really know what exactly transpires there or anything else. We're just getting some details here. I think it's also the name of the place would be Outer Darkness. I think it's described that way in the Bible, too. I think there's a number of names of the same places. They definitely deserve to go there. Right. So, anyway, the point is, is this? The, 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 they're the first two. There's the right. first two in there. Okay. So, there's two things here. Beast and the False Prophet are captured, and they're both thrown in the lake of fire, all in the same verse. And then the, then the next, the last verse in that chapter. Go ahead. And the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Okay, so the birds finally get their meal. Okay. Man, those birds had one big buffet. Yeah, so they kind of get their meal. And, of course, that was the loss of the, the whole army gets destroyed mm -hmm. and everything else. And, of course, you know, through, we, we don't know how exactly how this war went down. But there's also the seven bulls, seven seals, seven trumpets. That, that's a description of this war, too, that we see all these things happening. And uh, this is a form of the judging of the nations. This is the war that happens, I think, before the judging of the nations. Right. And so, yeah, this all transpires here and everything else. Okay, so this is the n next main event. Now, now we're going to go into the next chapter. Okay, the thousand years. Okay, Revelation chapter 20. Okay, so now we're past the false prophet captured, thrown in the lake of fire, the defeat of the army. Now, the next thing that happens after the army gets defeated. Right. Go ahead and read Revelation chapter 21, verse 1. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. Okay, so now we know the next event. Satan, get, the devil, gets bound for a thousand years in this 
in this basically bottomless pit. Right, so he had basically two names, devil and Satan. And dragon. Right, yeah. three I names. I mean, f- you know, serpent. Serpent, yeah. Yeah, yeah four so, names. So, I mean, his, his descriptions of who he yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the devil and Satan is kind of his name and cl- nomenclature, you know, his... Well, he's used the devil most of the time in the Old Testament, mm-hmm. and then in Satan, he, he has become his new name after Jesus' temptation in the wilderness, so basically. So he, like, rename himself? Well, it, it, Jesus names him Satan at the end of his temptation. Mm. And so he says, "Get you know." He said mm-hmm. he calls him Satan for the first time, and then from then on out, he's become known as Satan. Right. When before in the Old Testament, he's primarily only known as the devil. devil. Yeah, mm-hmm. because the devil means slanderer, and Satan, of course, means uh, um, opposer. opposer. Right. And now he's opposing Christ. Right. And so now the devil is gone. Okay. Right after that war that happened, the devil now gets cap is basically gets captured somehow by this angel, One and basically. Angel. Thrown in the bottomless pit by an angel, mm-hmm. and so now you know the devil's out of the picture for the thousand years right. of Christ's millennial reign. Right. Okay, that's why I believe Christ's millennial reign was a real one thousand year reign. Here it's described why he would be bound for a thousand years. That makes sense. He's bound for a thousand years because Christ's millennial reign is without his involvement or anything of that nature, and so it's kind of a Sabbath day. For mm-hmm. for the nations to not be deceived by the devil, right. by, uh, by uh, like a long year or two, believe. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's by no means perfect because people still sin, but right. you don't have the devil mucking everything up. You know, right. essentially is what's going on. Okay, so that's the next thing that happens: the binding of the devil for a thousand years. Okay, right. So let's go ahead and move on to uh, Revelation chapter twenty, verse three. Okay. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him. So that he should deceive the nations no more, till a thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witnesses to Jesus, and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Thousand year reign of Christ mm-hmm. shows up mm-hmm. with the saints. This is the first resurrection. Right. Okay, so well, that, that's verse five is this is the first resurrection. So we understand the first resurrection is with the saints who did not receive the mark. This is how you know it, it, this first resurrected people are only the dead in Christ. Because it's a people that refused the mark of the beast mm. during that time. Okay. Okay. And, you know, didn't take the mark in their forehead or hands that's described earlier in Revelation as something that, that the beast was trying to get them to do. Right. Okay. Of course, they were all thrown in, thrown into the lake of fire, the beast was. But the people that refused that mark, okay, and they were going through all that, all basically, they you know, they were going through a lot of trial and tribulations. Because right. that was a great tribulation that showed up before that. See, I, I, we're, we're even before, later on after the tribulation time. Right. Okay. They're the ones that re, did that stood their ground, didn't take the mark, mm-hmm. and so they lived at their their reward for doing all that, right. overcoming the great tribulation during that time. Okay, saying no to the mark of the beast and all that stuff was that they got to reign with Christ for wow. the thousand years. They earned yeah. that. That's yeah, sure. they earned that because honestly, that was the worst. I mean, this is the worldwide persecution of the church. Well, you know, and you know, and, and Jerusalem was, people talk was about, nearly destroyed as a result. People talk about a hell. That really was like a living hell of making through that. Time. Yeah, and, and of course, even the beginning of Revelation, you know, hey, just endure to the end. You can make right. it, you know, because all these churches were enduring various forms of persecution there right. during this time, okay? Because they were in the Great Tribulation, John says, during his penning of this writing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they already knew what was going on, and so the ones that endured to the end, who didn't take the mark, all that, they reigned with Christ for the thousand years, and they got their first. Re- th- that, this is called the first resurrection, and this is, of course, only the dead in Christ because it was only the ones that refused the mark and all that kind of stuff that endured to the end. Okay, but you know they, this is brutal because a lot of people died, I'm sure, as a result of their faith. All the almost all the apostles were, were killed off during this right. time. Okay. So yeah, it was it was not easy to be a Christian and definitely hazardous to your health for sure. Mm-hmm. But the ones that endured, it, it made it, right. and they were able to reign with Christ for the thousand years. We we got we got that over with, done. Blessed and holy are those who take part yes. in the first resurrection. Yes. And so we aren't the blessed and holy because we didn't take part in the first resurrection, obviously, 
because that already happened in our distant past. Right. But this is what the, happened to these guys. Right. They said no to the mark of the beast and no to to the Antichrist and no to the the beast and the false prophet and all right. that. And they stood their ground against you know enormous persecution. I'm sure. Right. I mean, socially, emotionally, physically, every kind of persecution was going. Right. Okay. And of course, over that, the second death. We know what the second death is. Second death is the lake of fire. Right. See. Over such, the second death has no power over them, but they will be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him for a thousand years. That's amazing. So they didn't get thrown into the lake of fire like the beast of the false prophet did. No. Because we know that the, the second death is the lake of fire. Right. It's later on we, we find this out. Okay. So, again, th th this, that's the next thing. Now, of course, things start going downhill pretty quick after the thousand years is up, right? Right. So we have another war that shows up. So what's next here? Let's go ahead and so, read Revelation chapter 20, verse 7. Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. Okay, so the first thing that happens, Satan is released from that bottomless pit of his. So After a thousand years is the up. The timer dinged and he got out. Yeah, he got out. And that's why I say it's around 1070 A.D. Because, you know, of course, 70 A.D., I believe, is when, when all the Armageddon events showed up. Mm -hmm. And that's when the Beast of the False Prophet got thrown in there. About 70 A.D. And now, a thousand years later, it's 1070 A.D. And, of course, you know, we're zooming through a thousand years pretty quick <laughs> there. You know, I know that, you know, it doesn't seem that way, but this is a thousand years later. And... Satan gets released from his prison sentence, essentially. Well, that was a long time out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was brutal. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. And, of course, he was probably hopping mad. That's probably oh. the real reasons why he was released out of there. He's like, okay, I'm going to get... He's probably thinking every minute, well, how can I get back in this when right. I get out? I'm going to get back into the game and start deceiving yeah. right off the bat. Yeah, and so what does he do? The, the point of his getting released is for him to deceive the nations to go to war mm. against the camp of the saints. That was the point of... A lot of people ask, why would God release Satan after the thousand year reign of Christ? Why didn't he just throw him in the lake of fire? Keep him there the, forever. The point is, is God was using Satan as a tool mm -hmm. to get rid of this big army that was going to go up against the camp of the saints. And and and, and so you know, Satan thought he was like smart. Oh, I'm going to go up against the camp of the saints and destroy him with this huge, this huge army that shows up. And we learn about this army later on. He, his whole point is he's deceiving the nations. It took him probably time to get that. Gog and Magog war. We, it, this is the next war that happens. Right. Okay. The Gog Magog war shows up. What happens? You can go read all that back in Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter thirty-eight and thirty-nine. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, what happens? All these nations go to war against the camp of the saints. And there's a lot more detail in those two chapters than right. there is here. Okay. But this is what the, the next thing that happens. Satan is going deceiving all the nations. To go to war against the camp of the saints. From the four corners of the earth. In other words, all parts of the earth. But not every nation is involved. You learned in the Ezekiel passages that not every single nation on earth is involved. Not every single nation state is involved with this. It's just certain ones. Right. But they're all on all sides of the earth. They're just, okay, there's people all over the earth that are, we're going to have them go up against the camp of the saints. Right. That's what they do. This is what happens. They go to war against battle. And then whose number is as the sand of the sea. In other words, they're right. it's a massive horde here. And this is what's described here is a huge horde of people going up against the camp of the saints here. Right. Massive You can't even army. imagine how... Many people that were, I mean, sand, there's a lot of sand, you even in the hand. Well, you know, that, that is why, you know, when they use the word as, right. they're using that, and that, uh, I have another show on this word as, because a lot of times, it, it, obviously, there's sometimes the Bible uses hyperbole, but it's obviously easy to, 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 to get this impression. Well, when you say, I, I feel like crap today, you, you don't really <laughs> feel like crap, you're just, you feel as not as good as you do. This is the same way the Bible describes well, you. Well, the idea, too. though, is is it paints a picture that there is an enormous group of people that you could barely probably count. Right, right. And that's the whole point is that it's like as the sand of the sea. In other words, 
it's not exactly that number because people go, well, you know how many Santa's there's there would be trillions of them, so uh-huh. there's no way there could be. Yeah, obviously that's an exaggeration, obviously, but it's trying to explain to you, like the state of the sea, so you see, you there's just so count. many you can't even count them. It's like right. that's how many people are on, right. are, are going to war. Here. Innumerable. Yeah, massive, a massive army. Mm-hmm. There, okay. And, of course, they went go, go, go up against the camp of the saints. So then that's the Gog-Magog War, deceiving the other nations. Mm-hmm. The Gog-Magog Gog War happens. And then what's the, what happens next? Okay, so, we, you know, they, they go up against the camp of the right. saints. Okay, now we're going to read what happens. Verse right. 9. That's they went up on the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints in the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night, forever and ever. Okay, so now we learn that the you know the they went and surrounded the camp, and but yet they didn't really get. It doesn't sound like they got their chance to fight too much because you read you really read in the Ezekiel passage a little bit more stuff that was going on there. Right. That they were you know fighting amongst themselves. Then there was fire and brimstone that came down along with hail and mm-hmm. a bunch of stuff that happened there right. and basically wiped out their whole army with various things that, that of course, here it just says that fire came down from heaven and devoured them, but they were also devouring themselves and a bunch right, of other things right, happened right, right. too. You know, in, in so they, they probably weren't expecting the fire to come down from heaven. Well, they, were, they, they just got to, so they lost that war and so the, the, the destruction of that army. And this was essentially God's final reset. Before the end for well, us. So God was used Satan one last time right. to do this, to get rid of this massive horde before, you know, of course, the end of all b- biblical prophecies were going to transpire here on earth. Well, the interesting thought, though, is that, so Satan was locked up, but this horde, this these upcoming nations that were, you know, so large in number... They were devising their own, you know, he just got out in time to lead them. I mean, or to kind of like corral them together to to instruct them in their battling. But basically, it was, it seemed like there was already a brouhaha already happening. And he just kind of got on top and, you know, corralled everyone to where he wanted them, the four corners of the earth. You know, that just seems that he just basically did his job that God kind of allowed him to do, and they weren't going to win. There was no way that they were going to be victors in that whole battle. Because God did his thing, and Jesus and his angels did their thing. Well, I think this war happened right around 1360 A.D., and that, to me, it kind of... Ex- yeah, what's that? Mm-hmm. And that, to me, kind of explains why Russia then, which was actually over in Europe, you know, Eastern Europe, then expanded and became the largest country on earth after that because that pretty much their whole war, their whole army essentially was decimated. And they were, able, and so Russia expanded east with, uh, because there's the whole war, their whole army was decimated in this war uh, of these eastern people. And uh, I think that's why they, they conquered all that land. And then, of course, um, the colonial powers of the west went west towards the Americas and started colonizing all that area. And that's what really caused all this colonization of the world at that right. point, when all these armies were basically decimated at, at, so, after this war. I guess Jesus really wasn't involved in the fighting. I was thinking it was the same as the Armageddon event, but not to confuse Gog and Magog with the Armageddon yeah. event, but yeah. it looks like God did the defeating with the fire from heaven and not mm-hmm. the angels and the saints and Jesus fighting too. So maybe no. So this, uh, there's two different wars, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's clear that the Armageddon war was the angels and Jesus fighting, you right, know, right, right, and and then this one was actually God and the fire from heaven that devoured. Well, and, and of course Ezekiel gives a lot more detail uh-huh. on that too. That's why I'm saying I think this is all over with and done because just go back and read right. Ezekiel 38 and 39, and I mean just be as honest with those scriptures as you can. Does this sound like a war that is in our future, or does this sound like a war that it are in our is in our distant past? Right. And that's all I did. I just like I'm reading this the description of this war that our mm-hmm. Bible tells us to go look it up. Right. That's why it mentions it here, Gog and Magog. So you go to that war, and if you just re- just with a clear just be honest with the word, mm-hmm. in my opinion, it's describing very clearly 
a war that happened in our distant past. Right. Before the advent of gunpowder. Okay, I'm just being as honest as I can. That's why I'm saying I believe all this is said and done. And I think that we're being deceived into believing, no, 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 this is a future war. When you're looking at the description of this war mm -hmm. in, in Ezekiel and you're like... No, everything about this war is in our distant past with all the weapons they use that we wouldn't use any of those weapons today. Just read it for yourself. Don't don't just believe me. Mm -hmm. Read that scripture, those two chapters for yourself and go, does this sound like a war that's in our future? Or does this sound like a war that most likely was in our distant past? And I think most people would come to the conclusion, if they were honest with that word, that this this war is in our distant past now. Right. And they, they are two different wars. And that's very clear here. That, you know, right. they the were two different very wars. two different wars. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, that that Gog-Magog war in our distant past, that was the last thing that happens before the Great White Throne Judgment shows up. Yeah, is it really hard to imagine, okay, the Great White Throne Judgment happened too? Yeah, I don't think it's, it's out of the realm of a, a, a possibility because that war happened in our distant past. Right. Time keeps moving on, and so we're beyond all these things. So this that's the last thing that happens here. So let's move on here. And so let's find out what happens after this big, of course, the devil who deceived them. He was thrown in the lake of fire right. with a beast and the false prophet that right. already showed up there earlier. So now there's the three of them in there. And I explained that this lake of fire is not a consuming fire because the beast and the false prophet and the devil are there and they'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. In other words, they're not, it's not a consuming fire. So whatever the lake of fire is, I, it could just be a name of a place and not really a, a, a physical fire. Who knows? But it, it's obviously, if it is a fire, it's not a consuming fire. And so, but they're tormented, which means they're not tortured. They're just not wanting to be there, essentially. And so they're there. Um, all three of them are there right now. Well, and it's, it's their new yeah. home, but it's not a happy place. Right. And so there's going to be especially day and nights there. Right. So time will go on there. And, of course, for the ages of ages. That's mm -hmm. what forever and ever really means. Right. I, I haven't really gone into that too much. I'll have to do that another show on the word forever. It doesn't mean forever like we think. It, it actually means ages. It means Continual. age. It means an age. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all it means. Okay. So, but here's ages of ages. So, in other words, they're going to be there. <laughs> they're not getting out anytime soon. Okay. So, anyway, we, we know that. Okay. So, the next thing that happens after the devil, is, which deceived them, was thrown in the lake of fire. So, he's gone. And I think the lake of fire is actually on the new earth. Mm. There, it's not on this earth. And we, ta we, we talked about there's two earths uh, on another show. Right. And as, I still believe this because the, everything's described here. This lake of fire on a new earth, away from us so, that, so they can't, Satan has no contact, no ability to do anything with us here anymore. Right. If he was on this earth, then he could just get his minions to go be, do all the fighting for him. And then, mm -hmm. you know, he's back in business. No, no, no. See, he's gone. He, he's, right. he's gone forever. That's why I think the lake of fire is on the new earth outside of new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And we are on this earth right now. So right. Satan is out of the picture at this point. Right. But of course here, it's just those three. We don't know when the demons go into the lake of fire. The Bible doesn't really say. So that's why I'm saying the demons are still running everything. But no one is going to be left unpunished. Well, yeah, the, the demons will get their the, will, will get their punishment eventually because right. that's the lake of fire was the, the Bible says in another place that was it was it was created for the devil um, and his and his, right. and his and his and his his, his lackeys demon, his lackeys. So <laughs> we know that he's going to go. They're going to go there. We just don't know when. The Bible doesn't never, never tells us when. No, it's a baddie clubhouse. You're right. But the Bible only tells us when the devil and the beast and the false prophet are going there. It doesn't tell us when the other ones are going. Right. So it could be a long, long time from now. We don't know. Okay. Well, we just know that everyone's going to be... Yeah. Everyone's going to get judged eventually, including right. the demons. But we just don't know when all that's going to happen. Okay. So for right now, they're, they're kind of running the joint now. After Now that, that now the devil's gone. And I think, that like like you say, I think the some of the demons that were running these nation states... Right. All the way through history are now you know, up their ante and up their game, and now they're running everything now, okay? So they, they just kind of took over. Of course, the devil probably, you know, taught them everything they, they knew, so they, they're just using the devil's playbook. But again, God knows and has a plan, and we aren't going to be left high and dry or anything. He's got a way out and a way to discipline those who are against him. Let's go ahead and read Revelation chapter 2. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from those whose face the earth, and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. 
And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the book. Great white throne judgment shows up. See, right after the defeat of Satan and the devil is thrown into the lake of fire after this gog Magog war that we just read about, that's kind of the last event, the next event that shows up here, this great white throne judgment, okay, where God is going to judge. And and this, is, this kind of makes sense. You, the, the dead are all judged. See, notice here, it isn't the living that are judged. I, this is a very clear thing. I, this is one thing I did notice. See, I, I'm really a stickler for details. Okay, I, I just read what the script, what the text, what the Bible says. I don't add anything to. I don't subtract from. I just read what it says. Here, it says he saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. So, see, people that were still alive when this happened, this did not affect them. Hmm. See, this is one thing I noticed about this that really caught my attention. Is the Great White Throne Judgment wasn't for everybody. The people that were still alive on earth at this time were not judged. Here, the only one that says that will go through the great white throne judgment are the people who died. So you see, this is, you know, you just got to read the details and just, and just not add anything to it. Because what people automatically do is they think great white throne judgment. Oh, everyone's going to be judged now. It's like, oh, wait a minute now. It doesn't say that. It says the dead. He saw the dead judged. And they're going to all be judged, of course, based on their works and what the things that are written in the books. Book of life, you got to be in that book if you want to have eternal life. Everyone else is going to be thrown in a lake of fire. With a, with a, that's why I believe that the, the lake of fire is actually in New Earth and not on this Earth. Because otherwise Satan could just, oh, you know, he could just keep running things. It's like being in prison here on, earth, on this Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, you can just make phone calls and you can still be running things from, you know, right. from prison or whatever. No, no, no. It, it, he's gone and he has no access to our right. our realm. This is a new realm that's been created in on New Earth. This is where the dead go. All the dead are going to be judged and they are, they are over there. What happens next? And I saw the dead and small great standing before God and the sea gave up the dead who were in it. The dead in Hades delivered up the dead who were in them, and they were judged, and each one according to his works. Okay, so now we learn that there's two sides of Hades here. Death and Hades both delivered up the dead that were in them. See, mm. I, I, well, I've been getting a lot of comments about this. People don't understand. They think death is gone now. No, no, death is just the name of the place that, that, that dead people went to. Right. Okay, because it says death is... And Hades delivered up the dead that were in them. See, in other words, death and Hades are names of places that the dead were, were located. Right, so Hades was usually the good place. Yes. Death was... Death was the place that was Abraham... Uh, uh, on story of a rich man Lazarus, there was Abraham's bosom, which would be Hades. Right. But then there's another place where the rich man went. Right. Which was uh, what uh, the, the, the other scriptures that talk about the lower branch of Hades, essentially. This is where death is. And that's a separation from God. In other words, that's why it was so terrible over there for that rich man. Right. In that story, because he was in the death side. Right. And death, we we understand from another show, means separation. He was separated from goodness and love and all that kind of stuff. And so that's why it was such a bad place. Mm. See, so the sea gave up. All the dead were were, were all gave up the dead and so this death in Hades place that were warehousing the dead for all those right, years right. 7,000 years that death and Hades were both warehousing the dead of all the people who had died all the way through the only ones that got out of that were the first resurrected right, people right. during the first resurrection everybody else went to either death if you're bad or went to Hades if you're good okay mm -hmm. and both of them delivered up the dead that were in them so there's no more dead people being warehoused at either death or Hades side, right? Okay? Which is the, either the good side of of the where of the place of the dead or the bad side, right? Okay, and it is it's, it's just I'm trying to explain this because people aren't really understanding because they think death is gone. No, no, no it's, 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 that's what he named the place right. for the bad side of Hades. Okay, it, it's very clear here. But you just got to read this and realize you no know, death and Hades delivered up the dead that were in them. Okay, if you just Read that to yourself about 15 times. You'll understand what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> it, but people just, they just automatically think dead or gone. No, no, right. death. No, it wasn't death yeah. itself that when you die, it's death. 
No, that wasn't what was put away. It was actually the name of the place where the where, bad yeah, people who the, died. Where the bad people went and died. They had like both those sides of Hades. Right. The death side and the Hades side, both of them gave up the dead that were in them, and they were each judged according to their works. Right. Okay, so that's the next thing that happened. Okay, because I'm getting a lot of confusion about this because people are all like, wait a minute, I thought death was gone after... No, it's not that death is gone. People didn't die. It's that the, the death is the name of the place that was warehousing the evil dead. Right. Okay, that's that's what you need to understand. And then Hades, or otherwise known as Abraham's bosom, was the mm -hmm. other side that were that the good people went. Right. You know, righteous people went. All the righteous people went to to the underworld. No one went to goes to heaven. Everyone goes to this underworld, either death side or Hades side. Okay. And if you're good, you go to Hades. Which is the wedding place of the dead, sometimes known as paradise, sometimes known as Abraham's mm -hmm. bosom. That's the side that you want to go to, okay? Right. Or you wanted to go to. Now, you know, this, both these sides have d delivered up the dead that were in them. So now they're basically, they're empty now. Right. No longer existing. They don't, no, they're no longer going to exist. And they're going to be actually, we learn in the next verse. Right. They're going to be actually combined. Right. There's a merger that happens. <laughs> and so go ahead and read, um, Chapter, uh, verse, verse 14 of that. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Okay, so, of course, death, the one side of Hades that's bad, and Hades was the good side. But you see, now, what, what happens to the good side of people that die after that? Well, they're not going to death or Hades anymore, right? Right. Because th that has been combined or Absolutely. merged... Mm -hmm. No, no, it's, it hasn't been, it's been, I, I made a mistake, I said it had been destroyed, it wasn't destroyed, it was merged with the lake of fire. Right, okay. Okay, so this is very clear, because we know the lake of fire isn't a consuming fire, okay? So, now, it could be that this idea of the second death, the first death was death in Hades, you know, there's a couple of things there it could be. Death could have been the, the bad side of Hades, and then, of course, Hades is the good side. Now they both are gave up the dead that were in them, right. so there's no longer a waiting place for the dead anymore. Okay, they both those locations get combined with the lake of fire. Okay, so now lake of fire is the new place where the dead, dead. go, mm -hmm. or at least the wicked dead go, and this is the second death. Right. Okay, so the question is, where do the righteous dead go? Well, okay. because if the Hades side is going into the lake of fire, right. well then you. <laughs> Then where's where are the righteous people going to go? Well, we're going to learn where they're going to go here pretty soon, okay? Because another thing comes in the, in very next in the next couple of verses here. See, it, once you understand the flow of how all this works, everything makes sense now, okay? Right. Okay, where the warehouse of the dead, where all the people who have died went to now, is now vacant, and now that got thrown into the lake of fire, which is called the second death, right? Okay. Which means only the wicked dead go to this place now. Well, and that's where the false prophet and the beast, beast are. Beast already are. And Satan. Yeah, Satan, the beast, and the right. false prophet. Yeah, the three of them. And so now you have this death in Hades, the warehouse for the dead, th going getting thrown in the lake of fire. Right. Okay. So now there's no more warehouse for the dead now. Where? Now the question is, where do the dead go? Right. Now this is what we're going to learn very quickly in the next chapter. Okay. But let's go ahead and read the last verse here. And anyone's not found in the in the in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So the people that are the wicked dead get thrown with the beast and the false prophet and the devil into the lake of fire where death and Hades was cast into as well. See, so you got all these things in there now. You got, you know, five things in there, plus you have all the wicked dead, whose name are not found in the book of life, they are outside of the New Jerusalem. We're going to discover that's where all right. the righteous dead go. From now on, the righteous dead, there's no death in Hades anymore. No warehouse for the dead now. It's going to be New Jerusalem for those. Everyone else gets oh, the lake of fire. Outside and the, the lake, and gnashing of teeth. lake of fire is outside where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. It could be all the oh. same place. Okay. See, this is what, if you understand how this all works, everything kind of makes sense now. Well, I'm trying to get a visual. Yeah, yeah. You know. See, you have to look at how the text runs 
Now there's no place for the dead to go. Now the next question is, well, where do the dead go now? Okay, where are the dead going if the warehouse for the dead is now gone and vacated? Okay, where's God going to put the dead now? Well, he says here that death and Hades got combined with the lake of fire. So, mm -hmm. okay, wait a minute. We don't want to go to the lake of fire because that's where the devil and the beast and the false right. prophet already are. So that's where the wicked dead get thrown into. We learn that in verse mm -hmm. 15. So what about the righteous? Who, where are they going? Where's the good people going? Where are God's followers? Where's Christ's followers? Where are they going to go? Well, we're going to learn that in the next chapter. Right. Okay. So let's go ahead and read the next chapter here. We're going to find out where the righteous dead go. Now, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Now we find out there's this new earth. New heaven, new earth. Okay, I, I call it new earth, but we got to remember it's a new heaven as well. And heaven means sky, everything else. So in other words, it's a whole new atmosphere. It's not right. just new earth. I, I, a lot of people want to say new earth and like, oh, there must be land somewhere, you know, outside of where we can... No, no, that because that would be the same heaven. No, no, it's here's a new heaven and a new earth, so it's a whole new realm. Right. Okay? And then that's why I try to explain to people, no, this is a new realm that God has created, and this is where I believe he, he's finally seeing this place. I believe it already existed before, mm -hmm. but this is the first time that John is actually seeing this place now. Because now he's finding out, okay, this is where the righteous dead are going to go. And so he's, he's, this is showing up here. Well, I, I'm just kind of envisioning this. It's kind of like a new house that's been on the mar that's put on the market and, and John is getting the first walkthrough. Right, right. Ex exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, it, I think it was around and I think that's where the Lake of Fire is outside of New Jerusalem here. Mm. Of course, New Jerusalem isn't even on New Earth yet. Okay, we're going to learn how that comes down out of heaven here in just a moment. Mm. The point is, is, okay, new heaven and new earth is, he sees this place now. In other words, it, I don't know, I don't think, you, I think it was created long before where the beast and the false prophet, I think that's where they went to, to get, to get them out of the way, because I think that's where the lake of fire is outside of New Jerusalem on this new earth. Wherever that lake of fire is, that's where the beast and the false prophet and those guys are. And I, that's maybe where weeping and gnashing of teeth is. Outer darkness, it's called a number of things. I think it's all the same place. Right. Honestly, I think it is. Right. But it's, everyone's going to get different punishment. Not everyone's going to get the same punishment. Remember, the Bible's very clear. Everyone's going to be judged based on what they've done. And not everyone's done as bad as others. Some of the real, people are really baddies that are going to get <laughs> worse punishment than others. Right. Just, right. That's, God's a very righteous and good God. Right. He's so not going to no just... Favoritism, yeah, right? he's not going to throw everybody in the same uh, boat. That, you know, may not be as bad as other people. Right. Everyone's going to get individual punishments, okay? Right. So now, of course, the first heaven, the first earth has passed away. We had, we've we done a whole thing on that. The pass away does not mean dead and gone buried. That right. just means that they went past it to the new one, okay? Right. It was former. We're on that first heaven, new first earth still. It's not former to us because we're here. Still. Yeah, we're still here, okay? That's how we know that we're, we're, we're not on new earth right now or new heaven. We're on, old, we're on first heaven and first earth. <laughs> well, it's kind okay? of funny. You think about it. We as as humans say that we pa we someone passes away when actually when we die the former the the former living place that we were on is passed away. We aren't passed away. We are no. We're moving, still here. That, we're that, moving actually, on. that's a good description of the dead because that's essentially what they are. They're passing away from here right. to the new place. Right. So it is a really good description. Unfortunately, people misunderstand it to think that it means. The, fir the first place is gone in bed and dead and buried. It's no. kind of like you go from one store yes. to the next store. Right. That means the previous store that you were at is not dead, buried, and gone. It just means that you're not there anymore. Right. This is essentially what you're doing here. You know, if, if you know you go shopping, you understand. Shoppers understand that. Okay. Well, so, but yeah, but you you would you pass away from this realm into the next to the next realm right. the first realm's not destroyed no it's just, just you've gone to the next one exactly. now and you ain't ever coming back to that first realm. no see that's one thing we learn here is you're, you're passing away from this one to the next one right but the first one's still there right it still exists there's still people living on it there's still life there right. it just that you're going to the next one this is what john's describing here okay that's why there's two heavens and two earths and, and they both exist at the same time. It's just that right. he's going to the new one, and right. we're still on the first one. And so this is the confusing part, but once I understood this, everything now makes sense now. Okay, so that's the next thing that happens, new heaven, new earth. Okay, go ahead and read 
Revelation chapter 21, verse 2. Okay. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, ordained, adorned for her husband. Okay, so now the new city of Jerusalem, this is New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven. And of course, we're, we get later on to some descriptions of this city here. We're mm -hmm. not going to really get into that too much because that will take a whole new show. We're going to have a whole other episode Yeah, on that. we're going to do one on New Earth, a, a New Jerusalem soon. But yes. the point is, the, the city comes down out of heaven, and this is going to be the capital city of the mm. New Earth. Okay, And then the people outside this city, you learn later on, are the ones that are in outer darkness. I think that may actually just be called the Lake of Fire, Any, mm -hmm. the place outside of this New Jerusalem place. This New right. Jerusalem's a huge city, folks. Okay, right. it's massive in, in, in its dimensions. It, it really, most people would call it a nation state. That's how large it is. Right. About two thirds the size of the continental United States. It's right. huge. Okay, we're going to go into that here uh, later on. But it's coming down out of heaven. Boom, with city walls in there and the whole nine yards. No one, you know, wicked could go in there just for the righteous. And so the righteous people, hey, they get their new home, and they're they're there when all the people that are the wicked dead, they're outside mm -hmm. this place. Mm -hmm. See, and it's too bad they didn't make good wise decisions. And that's why I want everyone to, to make it into that that Amen. city so I can go visit you. Okay, mm -hmm. I plan on visiting everyone on this show, <laughs> and I want you to be there, and so I can just say, hey, brother, I'm glad you heard my show. <laughs> you know, and that's what we want to do. We want everyone to be there. I, I don't want to. God wants every single person yes. on earth to be there. Exactly. Okay. And this city is big enough that they can house every single person on earth. Right. But the point is, is most people are not wise to make wise spiritual decisions in their life because the devil's tricking everybody and right. Satan has, has been getting everyone to just be confused. Yeah. Be confused and, and, and start living a life of sin and depravity, which is what I'm, what, what, I, what sickens me. Okay. Right. Well, they're, they're forgetting. Or ignoring what is right to go with the easy path. So, okay, so now we have New Jerusalem descends out of heaven to the new earth. Mm -hmm. New heaven, new earth, okay? So that's what we have next. And then what, what happens after that? Okay, let's go ahead and read. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Okay, so now you have the next step. The dishing out of the inheritances. Mm. Okay, And this is exactly why I believe that in Daniel chapter 12, okay, because it says here, Daniel chapter 12 verse 13, that Daniel will receive his resurrection and his inheritance at the end of those days. That's why I say those days are years because here it's describing the great white throne judgment where mm -hmm. he was going to inherit. And that's exactly what we are. Everyone who's a believer in Jesus Christ and a follower of God right. becomes inheritors. Okay, This is what the Daniel's promise was. He was going to become an inheritor and so will we. Right. We're going to be inheritors in this new Jerusalem. Mm. Okay. And so this is one of the last things. That's why I'm saying, people say, why do you think those days are years? Because the description of what Daniel was going to get at the end of those days was right. his in is his resurrection and his inheritance, and that was only going to happen at the Great White Throne Judgment, as it describes here in Revelation 21 verse seven. Mm. So you see, everything works out. the The 1,335 days is the 1,000. Is, is days as years, 1,000 years of Christ, millennial reign, right. and then 335 years of Satan's little season. Right. And then after that, Daniel was to receive his inheritance, just as it describes here, right. with the new heaven, new earth coming down, and he was to get his place in New Jerusalem. Right. So all okay. of those people waited. Yeah. Of course, Daniel was part of the people that were warehoused in right. in Haiti side. Right. He was warehoused there in the Haiti side, and he had to wait all this time, you know, hundreds, thousands of years, right. for him to finally get his inheritance. Right. And he got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe he got it already. He he. And we also will receive an inheritance. Right. When we overcome and make it to the end. Right. Okay. But we, they like say, to he who overcomes. Okay, that's why I tell people, 
How do you how do you make it? How do you, what, what do you, what do we need to be doing here? Well, it's right. really simple. We have to overcome. Right. The Bible is very clear on what what, what, we should, what we need to be doing. Overcoming the wickedness of this world right. so that we can make it to New Jerusalem, so we can become inheritors. Right. Simple as that. In other words, we don't want need to, we don't need to be giving up. Yeah, I know the things look, look kind of bad right now. Things are kind of dark. We're living in a more dark age than we were living in the past. But you know what? We need to overcome. Right. Simple as that. Just like the first resurrected people right. had to overcome all that, you know, not taking the mark and all that stuff. You know, they went through a lot more persecution than we are going through. Well, right. And that's the thing is, you know, we can endure what is before us because they endured what was before them. Okay, well, we're going to read one last verse before we're done here. Okay. okay. And this is the last thing on our list of 21 things. Okay. okay. Verse, Revelation 21, verse 8. And this is a warning right. to all people on earth. I'm just warning you here. We, go ahead and read that one. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So that's why I say I believe this is on New, new Earth, because here, all the wicked dead here that are described mm -hmm. here, their place, they're going to have their part, in other words, their inheritance... Is part of the lake of fire with burns, burns with fire and brimstone. We know it's not a consuming fire based on the, the chapter before in Revelation mm -hmm. chapter 20. So I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but they're going to be outside of New Jerusalem in the place that's called the second death. See, the first death was death in Hades. That was the first death. Um, now the second death place is the place where you're outside. See, death means separation. That's right. essentially what it is. You're, you're getting the second separation is what you're getting. Right. Because the people that are the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable murders, they chose a lifestyle that wasn't support. See, God can't be around people that are wanting to rebel against him, that right. choose to rebel against him. Right. He separates himself from those people. That's why in Garden of Eden, mm -hmm. he had to separate himself from Adam and Eve, who sinned. Right. It's really super simple if you understand it. This is what happened with Adam and Eve. They sinned, and God had to separate. What's sad Death about first. that is that if you are in this lineup of people, you know, you fall into one of these categories. You know, you're not choosing righteousness, so you're in one of these categories. Not only are you going to the lake of fire, but your bunkmate is <laughs> the other baddies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not a good place for sure, and this is why it's going to be, the Bible describes it as being a place of torment. Right. Not torture, but torment. Right. If you don't mind torment forever and ever, then go ahead. You know, live your lifestyle full mm -hmm. of sin and whatnot. Honestly, I don't need torment. I'm already <laughs> tormented in this life as it is right now because I'm a righteous person. Right. And anybody who's righteous feels the same way I do. That we're tormented in this place because we see all the wickedness around us and we feel helpless to, to, to stop it. Because wickedness is running rampant in this world. We all see that. I, I'll pick my torment now because that means I won't get torment in the future. Right. Okay. That means it, when the New Jerusalem comes out of the capital city, that's going to be run by... See, the New Earth <laughs> is run by righteousness because the capital city is run by God. And all, and all the all the immortals over there. This earth, though, it's opposite. It's run by the baddies. Right. We understand it's the wicked people that run this world. See, this is why we just have to endure to the end, overcome, as it says in Revelation chapter 21, verse 7. Right. Overcome. We shall inherit all things. we got to overcome this world to overcome the wickedness and stuff like that. But people who don't overcome, guess what? They don't inherit anything. They, um, they become... They have their part in the lake of fire. It burns with fire and brimstone, okay? Which I, which is the second death, which, you know, I'm trying to get people to understand. This is why just make every, Jesus says, make every effort to enter through the narrow gate. A number of ways he says the same thing. Right. Okay? We want our name written in the book of life, and we want to do everything. That's why I don't mind telling people that you have to quit sinning. You have to quit all this stuff. Because people think that they need all... No, no, no. What This, this is a trap from the from, from oh, yeah. satanic oh, deception. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and see, that's the thing. is Satan's deception is so deep. And it's so enticing. And, you know, I, I know that a lot of people have probably struggled in a lot of ways in their lives. And, you know, we've gone through our share of struggles as well. But there's nothing that God can't help us get through. He has helped so many people before us 
in so many other situations that as bleak as it may look, there's always hope. God always has a way of making sure our salvation or help comes to us. We just have to trust him. We have to just look to him. He has the answers. Nothing's going to be too deep or hard for us to endure. You know, it will seem like it, but we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we can endure and we can get the hope and the help we need if we just trust the Lord with all our hearts. Amen to that. That's what all we can do. All we can do right now is endure, overcome, so we can get our inheritance and mm-hmm. our resurrection because that's what we're looking for. That, that that's what we're going for here. We're right. going for that. We're going for the best gifts possible, which is not only an inheritance that will last forever and ever. Right. Imagine getting something that will be last for uh, ever and ever. Plus, we're getting eternal life, which will last forever and ever. So we're getting everything, but you have to endure to the end of this life and overcome right. the wickedness. It's really simple. I, I say it's simple, but you know it's really hard because the, the, the Satan's out there deceiving everyone and the, all these uh, wicked minions of, uh, is out there doing their thing to try to get everyone tricked into like going for, going for sin. And we just have, people just have to say no to all this nonsense. Well, and that's the thing. If you know what is waiting for you at the end of this life on this place, then you will eagerly, I think, endure to that end. So you can receive what's waiting for you. Um, Knowing that doing the right thing means you will reward something that is far beyond imaginable what you can experience, you you would experience in this life. But the idea is if you are living righteously and you have to endure and it's difficult, it's all going to be worth it. And then if you know that you're living rightly, you know that you won't be punished because, you know, if you've got, you're covered under the blood of Jesus and, you know, you're names written in the book of life, then, you know, you won't be spending all eternity with the baddies in the lake of fire, which those who are on that litany of lists will be. You know, I'm thinking, okay, I just want to make it through. I want to just trust the Lord and endure to the end because I certainly don't want to be living the rest of my days in the new earth with a bunch of bad cellmates. (laughs) Yeah, because you're going to to be outside. Talks later on about people on the outside of the city are, you know, that's where they'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And we don't want that. Yeah. I'm trying to understand that God's presence doesn't go outside, it only stays in the city. Right. Remember, the city is going to be lit 24 7. Mm We learn this later on by God's presence. And see, people won't be a part of that because, see, God cannot have his presence be in with sinners. Right. This is why it's only for the righteous. This is why the cowardly, unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, their place is outside because God, you, the, the, those people chose that. Right. They chose that lifestyle, and so God cannot be around it. So you don't get the, in the presence of You get outside that in this, what's known as the second separation because God has to separate himself from you because mm-hmm. you chose that. Now, you know, I'm just warning people right now. This is what I'm just trying to get people to understand. This is the way it is. This is what our Bible teaches. Right. I'm not trying to add anything to, subtract anything from. I'm just trying to tell you what the Bible says. I'm wanting, because we're living right now in a, a Satan's little season. Not the biblical one, but now we're running through the, the minions of Satan. Mm-hmm. Now that he, now the original Satan's gone into the lake of fire, we're now being run by his minions. The demons are running everything now in a new Satan's little season trying to deceive this world into going again with sin and depravity and everything else. And what we have to do is we have to stand up to it. Right. So Satan's, the name Satan is the opposer. So anyone yeah. opposing God is and, a Satan. And right now we have Satan's running this earth, right? That's we why, have, why, why we're still in Satan's little right. season. It's just not the original ones in the Bible. That one's over and done. But now we're in a new Satan's little season. And it's evil. You could see it plain as day outside, you know, throughout the, the communities and the world. You know, there is evil running rampant in some ways, but we just have to be focused. We have to stay firm, stand firm, stay just overcome, the course. show love of Christ all all the way through our life. Just follow the commandments of Christ. Follow what the, the Word of God says in our life. Be led by the Spirit right. and not by our flesh, and we'll be just fine because we're living in a new Satan's little season. Not only because it's biblical, but because it's the only thing that makes sense. Join or contact us at satanslowseason.org.
This is a non-copyright Living in Satan's Little Season production.